Hi, Neil again. This time I'm on a survey in North Shields, which is just north of the River Tyne. And I've been asked to do a dampened timber survey, pretty standard. Uh, obviously the property's been purchased. They've had a severe out who's recommended further investigations for various issues, one of which you can see on the chimney breast there. But this isn't really about the damp issues. There's a bit of salt damp on the front of the, on the cheeks of the fireplace. But it's mainly about the, t the timber side. I know I've posted a video similar to this some time ago, but it's always worth just reminding people because, especially the less experienced of is. So what I've done is I've rolled the carpet back, managed to get myself a hatch up or a floorboard up. There's my kneeling pad. That's what happens when you get to my age. And you've realized for years you neglected your knees. So now, smart thing is get yourself one of these little kneeling pads. It makes a heck of a difference. But really the purpose of this video, I've often talked about the moisture content on the upper surfaces of the floors. So I'm going to put my moisture meter in there and we've got a moisture content of 16.1%, on average 16, 16.1%. So what I'm going to do now is take the meter, I'll put it on slightly further down, obviously on the floorboard. And we're getting a slightly increased reading of 17.1% moisture content. But now, so we're talking 16, 17% on the upper surfaces. But I've said this before. It's massively important that we understand that the heaviest moisture content is going to be down at that point. And now you can see we're, we're over 30% moisture content on the underside of the joist. And I think get right on the edge and there you are we're now at 34 it's the sweet spot it's where fungal spores can germinate once we get above 30 percent moisture content the timbers are at significant risk of fungal decay as it is in this floor there's some minor evidence of wet rot but it doesn't look to be anything substantial i'll get rid of that so i've put this under there so you can have a look the joists themselves are relatively tidy. I thought I'd drop an extra light under there. There, that should make a difference. So, just to get an indication, there's no sign of a physical DPC uh, on the internal walls. And then this is the obviously the condition of the oversight. One of the things that I have noticed, I'm going to just turn this again. There's that there's a see that support and joist which spans the center of the room. Obviously, they want you know there possibly would have been a sleeper wall in there. But you've got this this joist, this quite a substantial joist running through. But the problem is it's actually in contact with the oversight in several places, and we can see the damp staining. On the on the uh, on the beam, you can see it further along there, exactly the same. So uh, obviously we've got a problem there. The moisture content is very high in that timber. Unfortunately, I kind of get on it to test it, but you know, the, the damp staining is obviously a bit of a giveaway. So what I will be recommending is that they lift the floorboards, and then once they've lifted the floorboards, obviously they, you know, they inspect that timber. If it's generally sound, then isolate it from contact with the oversight. There's been a lot of debris thrown under here over the years. It's probably been slightly raised. But as it stands, the floor itself, you know, generally are reasonably sound. But that's not to say that it will be in the future. There you are, a bit more light. But you can see the condition of the oversight. I mean, the ideal would be, because on this property, at the rear, they've had a kitchen extension built. And they've actually closed off the subfloor ventilation, so there's no cross floor ventilation. There's only one 9 by 6 air brick. Uh, in this location, you can't see it, it's further along, it's towards the centre of the room. No, we can't see it. So they've got a, a 9 by 6 air brick, but there isn't any cross floor ventilation, so hence the reason we've got significantly elevated moisture levels in the timbers. I would advise the client, or will advise a client. You know, long term, what I would be doing is actually take losing this floor and then replace it with a solid floor concrete construction with a DPM. It just makes a lot of sense. You know, the, it's general advice is not to mix timber and suspended 
uh, sorry, suspended timber and concrete floors because you know it's normally a recipe for trouble. Anyway, I hope that helps. But it's really just to reiterate when we're doing uh, when we're testing floors, we're not just putting the meter on the top surface because we do, and we get a reading of. 16%, 15, 16%, and we think, yep, everything's tickety-boo. But then when you actually get a floorboard up and you get on the underside of that joist, you realise there's far more going on than meets the eye. Okay, I hope this helps. Take care now. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.